you everybody for being here tonight. Um, I have to say it's been a particularly hard week for our community here, but to see all of you guys here in support um, is really, it's really helping me feel like I can get through and push through and we might have enough people in our corner to do something about this. Um, as many of you know, um, housing insecurity in the state has been at an all-time high and we recently, um, on Sunday, lost yet another community member um, to a preventable death that could have been avoided um, if there were safe, um, safe and local shelter for this person to rest his head. And unfortunately, um, he wasn't given the opportunity to get the care that he needed. He was a really good and kind man. He was a soft, spoken, and kind-hearted person who quite literally gave the shirt off of his back to someone at our drop-in center not long ago. Um, I do have a, it's a word from his case manager um, because the people who are losing their community here um, are really the ones who should be speaking about it tonight. Um, while this case manager didn't know the recently deceased for a long time, it felt like I knew him a lot longer. He was the kindest, most selfless, compassionate person I've ever met. This person didn't have proper shelter and lost his life that could have been prevented. Let this sink in for a bit. 80% of Americans are only one paycheck away from living on the streets. Homelessness is not the new norm. Housing is a basic human right. When we come together to honor people we've lost in this community, it feels like every time we lose someone, we're, we're planning the next person's funeral. We're planning to hold space for even more grief that's gonna continue down the pipeline. Um, right now, um, we're really holding space for Al, but we have so many more community members that have died even in the last month um, in this community. And at, in a later moment, we're gonna have a time to read a list of names um, and we'll take a moment of silence after that to hold space for all of those people we've been grieving for years and we haven't had one moment to stop and think and properly grieve these losses. Um, I pray that this is the only time we let this happen. I pray that we can move in a direction where we're gonna put people in safe, decent, housing that is accessible um, and every single person there should be not one person sleeping outside not in January on that note I want to invite up Trina who has uh, was a very very close friend of, of the recently deceased and has offered to share her thoughts something about Alan you didn't know he was always there for me as a kid I looked up to him. He was like a father figure in my life. Because my dad didn't care about me. Alan was a very loving person. He would have given you the shirt if you didn't have one. He's an awesome guy to have as a friend. He loved making sure all his friends was happy. <laughs> what I'm going to miss the most is when we used to go to his family's cookout. I always had a blast going to it. He would roast a pig and it always tasted good. And he also taught me how to make a campfire. He taught me a lot of other things too that I would, that he was my dad instead of the jerk I have now. I will never forget him and Alan, I love you. Rest in peace, my dear friend. And the city needs to do something. Absolutely. 
I'm gonna ask uh, Myth and Paul to come up and say a few words. I got to know Alan, I think, maybe it was a year ago that Trina actually introduced me to him. And it's what everyone's exactly saying, just the gentlest person you'll meet. No matter what was happening, he would never complain too much. And you have to like cry the things out of him. Like, hey, what else do you need? And he always just took things in stride and, and just was someone who was just doing the best that he could given the circumstances that he was in. And no matter what happened, he always was just very, very calmly and lovingly moving forward for so many people. When we found out about about Alan passing away, I, and I know a lot of people, this probably happens, you start running through your mind like, was there, was there something I could have done? Was there something we missed? And it sticks with you and you think and you think and you start trying to like uncover every last interaction or moment or opportunity and and I know so many people here felt this loss so deeply that we've lost sleep overnight thinking about this and it, it just begs the question are our leaders losing sleep over his death or is this just another number for them it's it's really really hard to keep doing this kind of work getting to know people and then losing them so needlessly and that yet so many people in this community keep showing up no matter what no matter how many hits that this community has taken the people just keep showing up and that's what that's what it, that's what it reminds me that that's the one thing that we can count on is each other is our community and as a community if we can come together and build and build and build and use this anger and use the devastation that we feel at this loss to build stronger bonds, then maybe, maybe we can prevent the next person from losing their life. This is not needed. And the only thing I can think of is like, when you're, when you lose your housing or you're close to losing your housing, immediately society starts saying like, oh, was it your fault? Did you deserve this? And then everyone starts to scramble to figure out like, no, 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 I can do this, I can do this right. but. The reality is the judgment has now been passed the way society's been set up and you're not allowed to make any more mistakes. Any one more mistake you make could be the death sentence and that's not fair. That's not how, how this should work. People don't choose to be homeless. This is a systemic problem that's affecting people not just in Rhode Island but all across the country. And the one thing we were always so scared of was that someone would die alone overnight in their sleep in this cold and I can't imagine what it would what what someone's body even goes through and it's it's just it's just not needed and it's it is a devastating loss and it's it's nothing less than that and every leader in the city needs to reconcile with this loss on a personal front just as all of us here are doing and then also in their job figure out how do we pro stop this from happening all I can say is that I'm so, so inspired to see so many people here, so many people coming together from all different parts of the city to show up and support in this cold night because whether you knew Alan or not, you know that this should never be allowed and that we won't let this, allow, let this happen again one more time to any other person in our city. So I want us to keep, keep fighting together, keep staying together, keep building power together because that's the only hope we have right now. knew Alan well and wanted to say a word um, and then I'll invite any other community members who knew Alan if you want to share something um, and if not we'll move on to the reading of okay. You never stop loving someone you just have to learn to live without them. Now I add you Alan to this list. We are made entirely of faults. Stitch Together with good intentions. Now, Alan, you sure had your faults, but also had a heart of gold for other human beings in need. 
the brotherly talks we had are forever etched in my soul. Memories of your spirit is forever in my heart. Now, Alan, you will be greatly missed, my best friend. Anyone else who wants to add? Someone, anyone who was close with Alan who feels like they want to say something? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Uh, by the way, I'm sad. Uh, you know, it, it, this isn't right. It's sad. You know, I uh, I just came home before the COVID hit from Afghanistan. You know, serving this country, man. And you would think, you like, you know. Yeah, okay, we're in the situation that we're in, but we are a community. We are just as part of this as anyone else. Got that right. And, but to them, our existence means nothing. To allow this to happen, like, it's outrageous, man. You know, because we're <laughs> losing good people, and we're dropping off, you know. And it, it, when things can be done, you know, like, I just, like, you know, it, 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 it angers me because, you know, I, I serve with my blood, sweat, and tears to make this country safe, and what, to come home and go through this, lose, lose loved ones out here, man, when things can be done. Like, it, 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 it's just, when, when does it stop? How, how many do we have to move before people realize that we are part of this community? We are a community. We are here too. So, what, we're supposed to just be pushed under the rug? Nobody wants to do anything? Just leave us out here? No. It always seems like it's, it's always a good mess. We never get the proper things that we need, and this happens. And no one, we have no voice. No one stands up and says anything. Just, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's outrageous, man. You know, like, I just, I don't know. I don't get it, they like, they like, come on. We are one of the richest countries in the world and things like this happen. Who, 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 who do we hold responsible for this? You know? Mayor Lisa. You know, I, mean, I agree. Yeah, but I mean, no, but it's like, okay, no support system, right? Where, where do we run to? Where do we run to when we can't run anymore? Or what, we're just supposed to die off? And we'll just forget about us? No, it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. Yeah. Okay. All right, we got one more, one more friend of Alan. <laughs> I've known Al since my when I went home. He showed me everything. Church, CCA, and how to live on the street. Now here's a man that had nothing. I gave everything that he had to help me and my son get to the homelessness. We're still homeless. But that's a friend. That's a great friend. For someone to do that, for somebody out of nowhere, it fucking breaks my heart. That he went the way he did. There was no reason for it. No reason for it at all. And uh I love you. That's it. Um, if there are no 
other friends of Alan. Um, Axel and I are going to go down the list of people we've lost um, that we know. Oh, okay. Hi, my name is Penny. I knew Alan probably long before you guys all knew me. And I have to say, he had a heart of gold, but he was a blessing. Um, he had a great sense of humor. He would, when I knew him, I lived at the Union House in Blackstone. And he would joke around with me and ask him if my cooking was going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> if that all sounds familiar, yes, that is Alan. <laughs> I said to him, kind of historic and, and kind of sarcastically, I'm still alive, aren't I? <laughs> so yes, and he's, he was an awesome cook. He loved to cook for his friends. But he also taught me to open up myself. He taught me not to be afraid. He taught me to be strong and to always share myself. He once said to me that I was the strongest woman he knew without being too much of a girl. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant at first. But I learned what it meant. I will always treasure him. And I will always be grateful and blessed to have been in his world as he was in mine. Thank you. We're gonna take a moment, read each name, and have a brief pause, and then when we wrap up, we'll call for a moment of silence. We ask everybody to reflect on um, this horribly long list of names that I have. These are, these are people that I knew personally, um, so no one can tell me they don't exist. We have Alan C. Wilbur E. We have Randy D. John J. Tony S. Nikki H. Evan J. Mike R. Shane L. James C. Louis D. Jefferson D. Riel S. Darwin S. Robert N. Jose C. Charlie B. Uncle Joe. Richard L. Tyrone. Jimmy D. Joe R. Anne Marie H. Morgan J. And Mike F. Thank you all for coming to share this sacred space with us tonight. And 
I, again, I want to extend my sincerest condolences to the family and friends of all of the people on this list, but especially Alan today, because if he weren't, if, this should not have happened. This was preventable. And every single person on this list had a family. Every, the loss of every person on this list has created ripples of grief that are tearing through this community. And the fact that we are sitting around acting like it isn't a problem or it's a problem for somebody else or it's a problem for a different part of the state, it's just gotta stop. We owe people better. People deserve better. These are human beings. They are good and kind people. Alan deserved better. They all deserve better. Every single one of the people who's going to be out outside tonight deserves better. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone. So um, my name is Alex Kithis. Um, yeah, I just wanted to echo what Krista said and thank all of you uh, for coming out and especially thank the loved ones and friends um, for who are mourning right now but who uh, did us the favor of sharing their words and their stories of Alan. Um, and I think a, a lot of us are here with some mixture of grief and the feelings of loss, but also anger and, and possibly indignation at a system that continues to fail all of us, and especially those of us who are living outside who don't have enough. And uh, I guess, you know, without making this too political, there are decisions that are made in the building next to us. You know, there are papers that are signed and votes that are made, and those have the real power to either fix big systemic problems in our city or cause new ones. And those systemic problems, those decisions that are made have real ramifications in the loss of people in our community and in and, and, and lives being ruined or lives being lost. And there are real ramifications to these systemic problems. And the, the people who we lose have names and have lives and have loved ones. And so, again, I wanna thank you all for being here today and, and thank you for, for being in, in this movement with us to, to change this, to change it so that we don't keep losing people. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay. If everybody wouldn't mind bringing your candles up to me, uh, uh, and please Alex, grab. Where, yes. where are the hand, the hand warmers?